crotchety clogger. Um, today, we're going to do lesson number four with our clogging. How's that sound? We're going to do, uh, we're going to learn how to do single basics, which we actually touched on back in lesson number three. But we're really going to delve deep into doing some single basics today, okay? And we're also going to talk about kicking. We're going to kick. We're going to kick, we're going to kick, we're going to kick. We're actually going to learn kicks in two different ways. Actually, three different ways. We're going to learn them with a sound. We're going to learn them without a sound. And we're going to learn how to put some of the double steps in with our kicks to turn it into what I like to call, and what everybody likes to call in the clogging world, triple kicks. So we're going to do a triple kicks. We're going to do other kinds of kicks. And we're going to start off with a single basics, okay? Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Make sure you get you some water to keep hydrated. If you haven't um, done the prior lessons, which the first one is prepare to clog, some good uh, warm-ups, getting your muscles ready to clog so we don't put so much strain on our joints. Lesson number two was the double toe, I believe. Lesson number three got into doing double steps and step rock step, okay? So those are, those are lessons you want to do before you try to tackle this. Unless you've, of course, you've got prior experience, you can probably start anywhere. Anyway, let's get started. All right, here we go. We're going to start off with single basics. If you remember in, in our prior lessons, lesson number two and three, I believe, we were doing step, rock, step, where we took a step, we did a rock, and we went right back down to that foot again. And remember, your rock is on the ball of the foot. So let's just start there a little bit. So we have a step, rock, step, and a step, rock, step, and a one and two. I'm going to move around a little. Step, rock, step, and a step, rock, step. Then we kind of added that little kick right there in that space right there. Yep. And that kick is where you want to kind of make that double, right? I missed a sound. There we go. Double step, rock step. That right there, you guys, is a single basic. To me, I think that's the easiest way to practice and achieve the single basic. Double step, rock step, double step, rock step. If I were to count this, I would literally give every sound a syllable or utterance. Double step, rock step, double step. single basics by beginning with the, the fundamental step rock step, yes? And adding that in there. Okay, typically that's not how, when you do a, a choreographed clog and dance or if you go out and you freestyle a little bit with a nice back porch band or something, you're not going to start that way. You could, especially if you freestyle, but in a choreographed dance, obviously, you're going to start with the first piece of that single basic, which would be the double step, okay? So let's try that, okay? So now instead of just going into it from step, rock, step, we're going to start off with the double step, right? Any foot you want to start with, doesn't matter. I'm going to start with my left, okay? So we're going to just do the double step, double step, rock step, double step, rock step. So that's how you actually start. Yep. Yeah? Let's try with 
with a little bit of music and I'm going to count with the music so that you can kind of see how it counts through. All right, let's see here. Okay, we're going to start with that double step, all right? Ready? Just for fun, just for fun, because I want you guys to feel like it's flowing for you. Let's start with the step rock step and just kind of sneak in our double toe, okay? All right, here we go. Step rock step. One and two. We got that space right there. me good. So I hope that the step rock step has evolved into a single basic for you. Single basic translating in, into double step rock step. Okay, so let's move on. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go over a few things that might be happening with you, okay? There's always things that if we catch them kind of early, we can fix them. One of those things, and I'm going to go back to step, rock, step. Because remember, I want, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, let me, let me spit this out here. Please understand that step, rock, step, step, rock, step is equivalent in timing to a single basic. Watch again, I'm, and, and of course we've done this. We've flowed right into it. So just remember, step, rock, step is totally equivalent to double step, rock, step, okay? So if, if I had another person here with me doing step, rock, step, and I was doing double step, rock, step, we would both be in time with each other. The only difference is that, obviously, that the basic, the single basic, has a little bit more sound to it. It has that sloppy, or that double toe. See how I missed a sound there? I'm doing that, I'm not doing it on purpose, I did miss a sound, but I want you to know that's gonna happen. So don't beat yourself up if you miss a sound, it's okay. It's gonna happen. Um, you'll still be in time as long as the downbeat happens on the step, upbeat on the rock 
last step on the downbeat. And, and so, in other words, if we tore this down, broke it all down into the timing, the and is the upbeat, the number is the downbeat, right? So, if we did double step rock step, the double it's a little bit more than just and, it's and up, right? So the double toe is and up, and that is the upbeat, and how we are up, right? Our foot is up. So we got and the one, downbeat is one, and we're down. And is the rock, the next sound, and we're up, check it out. And then we go two on the last step is down. So and the one, and break them down because everybody's brain is different everybody thinks differently everybody absorbs things differently uh, in their brain so I'm gonna break it down as many different ways as I can if you don't get it the first way I broke it down maybe you get it the next way uh, or the next way or the next way uh, okay so one other thing that might be happening when you do your rock step please be sure that you're going straight, uh, you know, that you're like on those two skis, right? We're on two skis, whether, it's, whether it be in the snow or on the water, we don't want to cross them, you know? If I was on two skis right now, the way my feet are, I think I'd probably fall. Now, I'm not a skier. I can't. I can only imagine. So anyway, when you when you when you're clogging, for the most part, make sure that you're on two skis and not crisscrossing. Okay? So let's take an example. When you rock step, notice how you're doing it. Are you rocking like this? Or are you rocking like this? Okay? Two different things, okay? And the only reason that might not be a good thing to do to cross like that is because, guess what? That takes more time. It takes more time to put your foot somewhere different than just a simple place like right there, right? So clogging's all about, or, or, or if your goal is about getting faster, and it don't have to be, but if it is, that going behind you is gonna slow you down, or crossing behind you, I should say. That will slow you down. Now, it's okay if you want to make something kind of different looking when you're dancing here and there. Um, but for speed, that's not going to help you. So, I would recommend practicing your rock to be, you know, right beside your other foot. Or at least beside the ball of your foot being beside the other heel. Does that make sense? You can go behind as well. And again, the farther behind you go, the more time it's going to take to do, right? As long as you have that shift of weight going on, you got it made. All right, so that's it for single basics. And now, let me get a swallow of water. Thank you. Let's move on. <clears throat> These allergies have got me. I tell you what, I'll be right back. Sorry guys, springtime allergies got me sniffling. All right, so let's move on to the next uh, fundamental thing that we want to touch on today, and that is a, a kick. We're going to kick. All right, you would think that kicking would be just one motion like so, right? Well, as we're clogging, we're going to learn a kick in sort of in two motions, okay? We're going to kick, and we're going to bend our knee up, all right? So, as, let's, let's just try that. We're just going to kick and bend it up. It's kind of like that rubber band thing that we did in, probably in lesson number one or, no, lesson number two. I use the rubber band analogy, if you remember. If you have a rubber band, you stretch it out and you release it. 
it goes back, right? So think of your leg as that. We got our rubber band, we're gonna stretch it, okay? And then we're gonna release it, right? We're gonna stretch and release, stretch and release. Now, when you stretch it, please, 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 again, don't uh, kick with that knee and make it such that it, uh, you know, that it pops. We don't wanna kick that hard. Just a little easy, kick out and bend up, all right? So now let's try this. We're gonna uh, take a step with one foot and we're kind of down, that's our down beat. We're gonna kick with the other, that's our up beat, okay? And then we're gonna release this rubber band, boom, and that's another down beat, okay? Make sense? So now it's our other foot's turn and we're gonna take a step and, uh-huh, we're gonna step, kick, up. I like to say kick up, you know, Let's take a step, kick and up, take a step, kick and up, and my up is referring to the knee, okay, it's actually a down beat, not an up beat, so we're going to take a step, kick, release, and step, kick, release, and step, kick, release, and I'm going to go real slow, down, up, down, profile for you. So I take a step, kick, release, and step, kick, release, and step, kick, release, step, kick, up and out, 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 right? That seems kind of complicated. A lot of motion going on there. Kick up, step, kick up, step, kick up. But when you get the hang of it, just like riding that bicycle for the first few times, you get the hang of it and it works. Cool. Let's do something that um, kind of will help you incorporate these kicks a little easier, okay? So I'm gonna do, this is called a triple kick. Triple me and three, obviously. So I'm going, it's not kicking three times, but what it is, is double stepping three times and then do a kick. So I'm gonna start with my left foot. Tell you what, let me turn. I'm gonna start with my left foot and I'm gonna do three double steps, okay? And a one, two, and a three, now I'm going to kick my right leg. Kick and release that rubber band. <laughs> okay, so now it's my right foot's turn. Three double steps. And a one, and a two, and a three. Kick and up. See how it reverses? And a one, and a two, and a three. Kick it up. And a one, and a two, and a three. Kick it up, and a one, and a two, and a three. Kick it up, and a one, two, three. Kick it up, one, two, three. Kick it up, and a one, and a two, and a three. Kick it up. Yep, kind of, sort of, sort of, kind of. Um. And, and I like to put the three double steps in front of the kick as you're learning kicks because the three double steps kind of give you time to prepare for that kick coming in. Now you can, uh, let's try it again. You can use your own method. Eventually, we're going to want to do them singly where we will take that double step and the kick right after. And then go to the next side, double step, kick, right? We want to get to that point. Yeah? If you find, though, that doing the um, three double steps 
in front of the kick helps you, try it that way, okay? That's simply known as a triple kick, as I said before. You just do three double steps, and the one, and the two, and the three, kick up, and the one, and the two, and the three, kick up. Yeah? So, either way will work and get you used to doing kicks. I'm going to touch on one more thing before we finish off today, and that is the kick itself. Um, you can kind of make it a little more interesting by adding one little sound to it, and that sound is called a scuff. Scuff. You could spell it S-C-U-F-F -F or S-K-U-F-F, -F, excuse me. Um, people spell it different, those two different ways. Either way, ooh, excuse me, either way it works. But it is exactly what it says, a scuff. Imagine scuffing your floor with the heel of your shoe. And, and that's totally what it is. So if you were to take your heel, the heel part of your shoe, the bottom part of your heel, and just kind of scuff it on the floor, that's called a scuff. That is a scuff. Yeah, easy as pie, scuff. Thank goodness, goodness that it's not truly scuffing my floors. I'm a little obsessive about my floors. Uh, they're brand new to me, so I'm going to keep them nice. Okay, so anyhow, which is precisely why I don't wear my clogging shoes in here. They're still broke, by the way. But, but yeah, I'm, I'm not scuffing up my floors. So, so I'm going to continue to scuff in my Timmy's shoes. Okay, anyhow, so when we, <coughs> excuse me, when we incorporate that scuff into our kick, the scuff actually, you know, obviously happens on the, the, the kicking part, the straight part, right? Then I'm still going to release, right? And as I release, I'm going to let my ankle become loose. So when you scuff, your ankle is actually tensing up, right? It's, it's flexing that foot, yeah? But now as I release that rubber band, I'm going to let my ankle relax, okay? Yeah, just like we talked about in prior lessons, let it relax. So we're flexed and relaxed, right? Flexed and, now, if this happens to you, that's okay. You know, it's a matter of just getting completely used to that, all right? So let's try the other foot. Scuff and release. Scuff and release. Scuff and release. Scuff and release. So now, if we put that in with uh, the kicks that we've been practicing. We take a step. We're going to scuff and release. Take a step, scuff and release, right? Let's incorporate that into our triple kick. You want to? Okay, let's give it a shot. So, we got and a one and a two and a three. Scuff it up. And a one and a two and a three, scuff it up. And a one, two, three, scuff. Ooh, I didn't scuff it up. <laughs> and a one, and a one, and a two, three, scuff up. And a one, two, scuff up, right? Now, you don't have to incorporate the scuffs in your kick right now. Um, the kicks are done so many different ways by so many different people. Um, you can incorporate double toes in your kicks. We'll, we'll touch on all that stuff in, in later lessons. But I just wanted to show you one cute little way that you could make it a little different if you wanted to. Um, it's, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of try to stay in, in where you can learn clogging in a way that you can take it to a freestyling thing for yourself. And I'm also going to offer some choreographed type of things for practice purposes, okay? Um, and eventually, I'm hoping we can even choreograph a little dance together. It'll be a clog along. In the crochet world, they call them uh, crochet alongs, and well, we might just do a clog along later on. It might mean that we have a 
uh, several more lessons to go, but won't that be fun, a clog along? Okay, folks, uh, let me fix this here, join you. So we're going to finish it up for today. Please make sure that you do a few little stretches to stretch those muscles out if you feel any tenseness in them. And as a disclaimer, please remember to ask your doctor before you participate in any type of exercise activity such as clogging, okay? Um, where else do I want to go? I think we're good. Please, too, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment section, okay? Or shoot me an email. It's in the description box. And I'll see you next time for lesson number five. Can't wait. Thank you, everyone. Mary Ann signing off, the Crotchety Clogger.